over r. So this time we would be comparing the x value to r. Well again, by the same reasoning that we did with y, we should realize that when we have an angle of zero degrees, that would be where x actually equals r. In other words, the ratio would be positive 1. And then, as we let the angle theta extend up like this, the ratio of x to r becomes less than 1. And we keep going through the same phases that we did for y, and we'll see that once again, the cosine of theta is never going to be bigger than 1. And when I get over into quadrant 2, remember that the cosine is negative in quadrant 2, but the ratio of x to r is never going to be smaller than negative 1. In other words, the range for the cosine of theta is negative 1 up to positive 1. What about the tangent of theta? Well, the tangent of theta, remember, is y over x. And the values for y and x vary greatly based on the angle theta. And what happens is when we take those ratios, it turns out that we can get any real number for the value for the, the, the value of the tangent of theta. Because when you take the ratios of x to y, not only will we get fractions, but we will also get mixed numbers. So the range for tangent of theta is the set of real numbers. OK, well, what about the three reciprocal functions? That is to say, for example, the reciprocal of sine theta is cosecant theta. Well, let's look at sine theta. If sine theta has to be between negative 1 and positive 1, then its reciprocal, that is, in this case, cosecant theta, would have to be, on this end, greater than or equal to 1, and on this end, less than or equal to negative 1. That is to say, it'll never have a value in between negative 1 and 1 because it's the reciprocal of sine. So cosecant theta is greater than or equal to positive 1, or less than or equal to negative 1. Let me write that down. So cosecant theta is less than or equal to negative 1, or greater than or equal to positive 1. Now by the same reasoning, Let's look at secant theta, which is the reciprocal of cosine. You can see that, once again, cosine needs to be between negative 1 and positive 1 inclusive, so the reciprocal has to be outside of that range. In other words, secant theta has the same range as cosecant theta. So secant theta is less than or equal to negative 1, or greater than or equal to positive 1. And finally, to finish it off, cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of tangent of theta, which means that it will be the set of real numbers. So cotan theta is, for the range, is the set of real numbers. All right. There are two other types of identities that are extremely important in the study of trigonometric functions. They are the Pythagorean identities and the quotient identity, identities. Let's look at first the Pythagorean. We have that sine squared plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. We have 1 plus tangent squared theta equals secant squared theta. And we have... 1 plus cotangent squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta. For the quotient identities, tan theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta, 
and cotangent theta is equal to cosine theta over sine theta. Let's work an example where we use these identities to solve a problem. So we have, find all six trigonometric function values for the angle theta if tangent of theta is equal to negative 15 over 8, where theta lies in quadrant 2. Well, if angle theta lies in quadrant 2, then the sine and the cosecant function values are positive. All other function values are going to be negative. Since tangent theta is given, negative 15 eighths, use the Pythagorean identity, 1 plus tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared theta. And we know that tangent theta is negative 15 eighths. So we have 1 plus negative 15 eighths squared is equal to secant squared of theta. Negative 15 squared, of course, is going to become positive. So we have 1 plus 225 over 64 equals secant squared theta. We would have to change the 1 into 64 over 64. So that's going to give me, on top, 289 over 64 equals secant squared theta. Now, when we take the square root of each side, of course, we have the plus or minus square roots, except remember that we've already determined that this angle is in quadrant 2, and therefore sine and cosecant are positive. Everything else is negative, including secant. So secant theta will equal negative the square root of 289 over 64, which is then secant theta equals negative 17 over 8. Well, immediately, since we have the secant theta is negative 17 eighths, we can use the reciprocal identity, and the reciprocal of secant is cosine, so cosine theta is negative 8 over 17. Now that we have the cosine theta, we can use another Pythagorean identity, which involves cosine theta and sine theta to determine sine theta. So let's do that. We know that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is 1. Well, cosine theta, we know, is negative 8 over 17. So we plug that in, and we have sine squared theta plus negative 8 17 squared is equal to 1. So that means sine squared theta is equal to, I'm sorry, yeah, is equal to 1 minus 64 over 289. So now we have to change the 1 into 289 over 289, and then subtract the 64 from the 289. So we get sine squared theta is equal to 225 over 289. Once again, we know that sine theta is going to be positive so we only have to worry about the positive root of 225 over 289. That gives me an answer for sine theta equaling 15 over 17. Well, immediately if we know sine theta is 15 17 we know that the cosecant theta, 